Sometimes, all your architecture drawings and images need is a good color scheme to show its full potential. In today's video, we're gonna talk about colors, color wheel, color combinations, and how all that can affect your architecture representation. So without further ado, let's get started, shall we? What's up guys, oh, Graphics in here. My name is Oliver and welcome back to another video. As always, before we get started, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I post weekly videos all about architecture representation and visualization. So during the collage video, I have asked you guys if you wanted a video focused on colors. And the response was amazing. So it is finally here. I'm going to review some color concepts and then, as I said, talk about the importance of using colors in architectural digital drawings and representation. All right, I'm assuming everyone has at least a basic knowledge on colors, right? You know that primary colors exist, and if you combine them, you get new colors, such as secondary and tertiary. Cool, now colors have three fundamental characteristics. Hue, saturation, and value. Let me explain it, then I'll relate it to Photoshop and later, of course, to what's essential about all of this. Alright, let's start with hue, which is basically the color. You know, blue, red, orange and purple, for example. The second attribute of a color is saturation, which is how intense the color will look. Let's use yellow, for example. You add some saturation and you get a very intense, looking like an egg yolk yellow. Then, if you take out the saturation from the yellow we started, it goes towards a pale yellow, as we often call pastel color. The last element is value, which is basically how light or dark the color is. It ranges from black to white, and you can get very different results when tweaking the value. Let's use this blue for example. If we go towards the white, we get a brighter version of a hue, often called as tint. Or on the other side, we can have a shade, a darker version of a hue. If you have noticed, it's the exact options we have over our hue and saturation adjustment layer, the famous Ctrl U that I always use during the videos. Now, after all these concepts, you might be wondering how do we combine all of this into useful color schemes? You may already know all of this, but let me quickly refresh your memory. There's something called color harmony and some known formulas that can be used with the color wheel. For these examples, I'm going to use Adobe Color website. If you've never used it before, it will be your new friend from now on. Well, there are many websites that can provide you with this service, but the cool thing about this one is that it links directly with Adobe Cloud and therefore Photoshop and Illustrator. Now, the easiest way to combine colors is to go monochromatic. You can choose one color and alter the saturation and values to get a good looking palette. Oh, and make sure to change the color mode to HSV, which stands for Hue, Saturation and Value, exactly what we saw at the beginning. Then there's Analogous, that combines colors next to each other on the color wheel, like warm tones, reds and oranges, or cooler ones, blues and greens. Complementary are opposite of each other, great to create emphasis in a drawing. In architectural representations, colors, in my opinion, don't necessarily follow common graphic design choices. These examples do look awesome, but usually in a drawing, well, drawing, image, render, elevation, section, and so on, you're trying to express the drawing's content, and it's not a marketing advertisement, for example. So using sober colors and maybe a touch of accent color here and there will be better to convey a message and won't draw attention to unnecessary parts. Then there's a couple of other colored theories to try out, but since we have a website that does that work for us, no need for me to go over it, however I highly recommend going deeper into this topic if you're interested. Alright, I feel that I've covered enough about basics, now let's focus on proper architecture drawings and I'll give you some examples to illustrate what all these concepts mean in action. First off, let me say that there's no right solution here. There's a range of possibilities with colors. For architecture projects that we are talking about materials and finishes, there's a whole nother approach to this. Because you're not dealing only with colors but also with textures. For example, wood, metal and concrete, and how these go along with each other. 
I'm going to link in the video description a video of the channel 30x40 workshop that I feel it covers it greatly. Alright, before we continue, there's some great news I want to share with you guys. Skillshare is sponsoring this video, and this fall they have teamed up with Adobe to create some exclusive online classes showcasing all the possibilities of Adobe Fresco, which is a brand new drawing and painting app with the most advanced brushes in the world. It's free to download for your iPad, so if you do have one, definitely give it a go. It's a perfect app to create sketches, illustrations, diagrams and honestly any type of art. I had a quick test and Fresco has these amazing watercolor brushes that blew my mind. There are many courses in Skillshare to teach you how to use Adobe Fresco. And I have watched this one from Liz Feng where she teaches how to properly use the app. She's an amazing artist and illustrator and I know I still got tons of practice to do but I really enjoyed Fresco's workflow. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering many creative and self-development skills. Its premium membership gives you unlimited access so you can enjoy any classes at any time and choose what's best for you. It's also incredibly affordable, especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month, and I highly recommend Skillshare because I believe in online learning. So, because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up with the link in the video description to get a 2 month free trial, and then decide whether or not this community is for you. Thanks Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Alright, to create 2D drawings, diagrams and collages, I like to have a color scheme on my file to help me out. As I showed you, you can create your own color scheme, or pick one ready to go. Up there you can go to explore and search around, you can even see the most used and popular ones. Then I usually screenshot it and paste it directly into Photoshop or Illustrator. From there I'll crop it, using Ctrl X to cut, then delete the current print screen and Ctrl V to paste into a new layer. Or in Illustrator we can still use the print screen image, but this time create squares and fill in with colors using the eyedropper tool, shortcut I. Next, we're going to see steps to change overall colors in each software, workflows that I often use. In Photoshop, let me show you a couple of ways to paint or swap colors. You can create a new layer on top of an object and clip it below, Ctrl Alt G, then fill this layer with a new color. Or you can use the hue and saturation adjustment layer, also clipped, and either tweak the settings here, or hit the colorize box to fully color the object. Note that they give different results. Let me show these changes over the full image. With the colorize box checked, you turn your image into monochromatic, and without it, you change each color individually. Then, in Illustrator, let's say everything in your file is in a single layer, and you want to change colors in a quick way. You can use the Select Same, either Fill or Stroke Color, to make a concise selection and change all the colors at once. Or you can select everything in your file and go to Edit, Edit Colors, Recolor Artwork, and change your file color palette. Now, to illustrate the color concepts in a render, I'm going to choose an image that I did when I joined a contest with an architecture office called Saboya Huiz. It was for a memorial, not gonna go into too many details now, but the place was to symbolize the lives lost in a fire at a nightclub of a city south of Brazil. See, you should start your post-production with more or less how your image final outcome is going to be. You take into consideration all the colors that are already in the image and work from there. For example, I started with a very basic render from V-Ray, nothing fancy, then put a lot of work into Photoshop building each and every part. Until now, I didn't pay that much attention to the colors. 
Then once almost everything is done, I overlay some adjustment layers on top to fine tune the colors. Since in this particular image we had highlights of orange yellow, a great contrast would be to color the shadows towards the blue. This meant a great contrast in the image because we're using complementary colors. While well, almost exact complementary colors, you don't have to be that rigid here. There are loads of possibilities here to do so. I often use the color balance to fine tune it. You can select the shadows, midtones, and highlights with it. But mostly, I use the gradient map, which is kind of like an Instagram filter, but with much more control. The color on the left represents the shadow, and the color on the right, the highlights. So blue and yellow. It doesn't look good just yet, but the trick is to change the layer blend mode to soft light. Mask it out and reduce the opacity if necessary. Usually it will darken your image a little bit, so I've placed a levels adjustment on top and increased the brightness. Now please note that these adjustment layers don't necessarily apply to the whole image. That's why I always use masks. Alright guys, as you saw, colors in a render are much more subtle and not that explicit as in a diagram or 2D drawing. That's obvious of course, but there still need to be some thought behind it even if you're going all ultra realistic. So I try to bring the important topics over this short video and show you my personal workflow about colors. Of course there's much more to learn. At the end of the day, you want to create a piece of art, portray your architecture the best way possible and create something aesthetic appealing to you and the viewer. I'm always trying to improve my knowledge over colors and I think it's a constant learning process. Well, I hope you enjoyed and learned something today. If so, don't forget to give this video a like, comment down below any questions or your personal thoughts about colors and how to use them properly over architecture images. Alright, I'm going to close today's video by recommending a channel for the Brazilian followers, because it's a channel that speaks Portuguese. Bom, eu vou falar em português aqui então. É o canal In Residence, com um conteúdo extremamente único que eu ainda não vi na plataforma e eu achei legal compartilhar com vocês. Eles falam sobre o processo de projeto desde a concepção até a construção e focam bastante na prática profissional do arquiteto. Se vocês ainda não conhecem, vale muito a pena dar uma olhada. Eu vou deixar o link na descrição do vídeo. Alright, thanks a lot for watching, and as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!